Hello UFC fans and MMA betting community. I'm coming back to you with another episode for the Allen and Craig card. We got a great value pick here. He's actually an underdog. Uh, you might want to jump on. I think people are starting to realize that the odd makers have messed this one up once again. We were just talking about how the odd makers are somewhat casuals. They go just mostly off statistics because on paper, you know, the resume is looking a lot better for the favorite. So it kind of makes sense why these casuals are siding with the wrong pick here. But I'm coming to you uh, with pretty good confidence. This guy... If you're inside the Patreon, if you know how the Patreon works, I go off a tier list. I invented a bulletproof system for parlays. Uh, you know, basically, if you get like 13 fights a week, we segregate the most confident picks. You got tier one is the most confident, tier two, semi confident, tier three is the risky plays, but the people who I'm siding with. And I don't go off of value, I don't go off of unusual things like a lot of uh, gambling. Uh, addicts, I would call them, and not betting experts do. They try to side with the value, thinking in the long run it pays off. But uh, my accuracy and my system pays itself off. I don't need to take risks or gambles. This is not what we do on this channel or inside my Patreon. We don't gamble. We wisely invest, and we play the long run. Uh, we play the long. We play the game for the long run to make sure that down the road, you know. We don't have to take big risks. It's paying off every single time. And um, we've been doing very good. Last two events, we only got one wrong on each event. And, you know, it was uh, close fights and, 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 you know, good picks. I wouldn't have uh, changed even, you know, considering what, what the results were. So uh, inside the Patreon, by the way, you get the full picks and parlays, prop bets. Uh, the link is in the description. You can follow it there. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. It brings me uh, motivation to keep making these videos. Uh, and leave any comments with suggestions or uh, any input or your opinions on these picks in the comment section, please. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about the Brito and Pierce fight. Now, uh, there's a lot to talk about with this fight, but I'm going to keep these videos short and sweet. I know you guys got things to do. Um, but... Uh, you know, they size up pretty f evenly. Actually, Brito is the one with the slight reach advantage. Um, he's even got the better record. He's the higher ranked guy in the world rankings. So outside of a couple of the stats, you know, and you know, you can't really go off of those numbers too well. Brito, even on paper, if you ask me, he's kind of the more impressive fighter. His strength of schedule is also the more impressive. If you look at uh, Pierce's most recent wins and fights in the UFC, I think like five out of six of those guys are no longer in the UFC. And outside of like a Darren Elkins, who's probably on his last fight anyways, I don't think he's even booked for another fight. He, you know, you guys know about Elkins, he's been around forever. Uh, if he does fight again, it's going to probably be against a, uh, another guy who's on his way out the door as well. So um, Elkins, who else was it? Mirakani, he's gotten cut. Um, Kai Kamaka's gotten cut. Um, what else did we have on uh, I think Morales, you've seen what a, a disgusting display he had of himself uh, before he got caught against the Duncan fight. He looked terrible. So he's he's got some wins, and it's looking good, his record in the UFC. But events, uh, just bit, no contenders, uh, nothing, you know, that we can really uh, say that was very impressive. It's fights that, you know, he didn't even look so impressive in. And, you know, the Americani fight, he was in trouble in that fight several times and the way he was in trouble is if you contrast like uh the fighting styles that this is what brito brings like in the during those firefights you'd notice pierce had his hands down on a lot of the uh, uh exchanges when, when it got crazy in there his hands weren't up uh he, you know and even his coach i think his coach i forget his name um uh he's, he's got a pretty decent uh striking coach and and a good squad but even his coach, if you looked at some of the interviews, he says that most of Pierce's wins have been from his toughness, his heart, and, you know, tenacity and all that stuff. It wasn't skills. Those are from his own, the own words of his own coach. That he gets, he got most of his wins not from the skills and how he, impressive he was with his skill sets, but his toughness. And you know, um, another thing, he just he's coming off of a, a fight that was booked recently. It was like about five or six months ago. He was booked against Mitchell. And for undisclosed reason, they didn't want to talk about it, but he had to cancel from 
uh, some undisclosed injuries. So this will be his first fight back after an injury. And I don't know if you know the story about this kid from a while back when he was still in the regional scene, but he had some pretty scary situations, near life and death injuries. He needed surgeries. He had broken jaws, concussions. Uh, his tongue got cut in half, uh, broken um, neck bone. So this guy had some serious injuries prior to coming into the UFC. I don't know what he's got going on recently, but the, the fight before this one that he was booked for, he had to can they they canceled it. They scraped it, scrapped it because he had some undisclosed injuries that nobody's talked about. So they usually, you know, uh, if it's not a big deal, they'll they'll just mention that you know bad weight cut or something like that. But couldn't find any information on why he he got he had to pull out of his last uh, booked fight. But another reason why I would be worried really about him, and I know even the first time he got really badly hurt, the guy had lost like forty pounds in twenty days, and he had to recoup. It took him a long time. He was eating out of a straw. It was bad. So a uh, guy with that type of health has, doesn't have an impressive uh, strength of schedule. If you look at some of Brito's wins, they've aged very well. You beat that guy, Diego Lopez, who just uh, last week or so came off an impressive win um, as an underdog who we cashed in on, we had bet on as an underdog in parlays. He came through for us, Lopez. He's on a couple fight win streak. That Chop Chip Chepe Mar Mars call, something like that. He's like on a five fight win streak right now, looking great. He's cashed in as an underdog in the UFC. Uh, so his fights have aged well. He, he's fought some pretty good fighters, uh, as opposed to Pierce, who's probably got the sympathy card from the matchmakers. Unless he's related to the matchmakers, they've got to feel some sympathy for what this guy has gone through. And they've, they've, they literally couldn't have matched him up with such any easier fights in the start of his career with them, the first few fights. Outside the Christian Rodriguez fight, but Christian Rodriguez is, you know, a guy who he's mostly going to go to decisions. I mean, we, we know what he did to that little, like, 18-year-old kid that came off the Dana White Contender Series, but that guy was a one-trick pony. Uh, he had no striking at all. So um, I'm not very high on Christian Rodriguez yet. He hasn't done enough to impress me to that level. You know, he's just very basic. He's easy to – he doesn't have that one scary thing you got to be careful for. And that's what Brito does, man. Brito's a scary dude. I know most of his finishes are in the first round, but again, I, I'm going back to the whole skill set there. Pierce is not some like crazy. I mean, he gets good takedowns and whatnot, but if you notice how he gets his takedowns, he kind of muscles and bullies his way into just bringing his opponents down. And but that's not going to work on a Brito. Brito's the way stronger guy. He does have good grappling, and but when it comes to power. The more dangerous on the feet, and even in the submission realm, um, <clears throat> I'm definitely going on the Brito side for, for, for those uh, advantages. So he's got the small reach advantage. He's the better uh, strength of schedule, higher ranking in the world rankings, uh, reach advantage, uh, better, <clears throat> better submission specialist, way more power. So if anybody's getting knocked out, uh, it's not going to be the Brito side, I don't believe so. For all these reasons, and we got him at an underdog, underdog value for this guy. So it makes no sense that he's an underdog. We got to take advantage of that. Odd makers, I think, screwed this one up big. And uh, <clears throat> good luck on that. I made a video before this one with a couple of easy locks, good value pick, and, and a couple of safe parlay picks. So that gives you a nice little three-legger if you combine all three of them. Some very good plus money there. Rest of the picks and the parlays, they'll be inside the Patreon. Again, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and leave a comment if you could. All right, thank you guys. Good luck. See you on the next video.